More than a century has passed since the time when carrier-based biplanes barely came off the wooden decks of aircraft carriers when no one had even thought that supersonic jets would soon dominate the skies. However, the evolution of aviation, much like technological progress in general, is inexorable. And today, the U.S. Navy is preparing to make yet another revolution in military aircraft manufacturing by developing its sixth-generation fighter, FAXX. In this video, we'll be trying to figure out how things are going with this aircraft and how the military is preparing to surprise us. After trying long and hard for decades to get every U.S. fighter ever built to operate from aircraft carriers, the U.S. Navy is determined to develop its next sixth-generation stealth fighter separately from the U.S. Air Force, specifically for use on its ships. FAXX is the designation given to the program to develop and acquire a future air superiority fighter that will replace the U.S. Navy's aging fleet of 4.5-generation F-A-18EF Super Hornet fighters and become a reliable ally for the current fleet of F-35C stealth fighters. The FAXX is part of the overall effort by the U.S. Navy and Air Force to develop America's sixth-generation fighter as part of one of the military's most ambitious programs, Next Generation Air Dominance. Next Generation fighter concepts began spreading like wildfire even before the U.S. perfected its F-35, However, the first more or less official news of the future Navy fighter can be considered the option proposed by Boeing in 2009. The company showed the concept of a stealth twin-engine tailless jet with a mixed wing and a cockpit designed for two pilots. Although the latter did not mean that Boeing's brainchild would not be able to operate in an unmanned mode, according to the team, this feature was available in their concept but depended only on the mission of the fighter set by the command. After another four years, Boeing updated its original project. It was still the same tailless stealth fighter in the 40,000-pound weight class, now with a front fin that further reduced the effective area of reflection of enemy radars. It also has supersonic air intakes without diverters, reminiscent of those we've already seen on the F-35 Lightning II. Between these announcements from Boeing in 2011, the U.S. Department of Defense was still announcing plans to replace 556 aging F-A-18CD Hornets with 220 new F-35 fighters. However, by the spring of 2012, the U.S. Navy published an official request for information on the F-A-XX program. It announced plans to develop and produce a multi-role air superiority fighter designed to replace the remaining carrier-based EA-18G Growlers in service and completely displace the F-A-18EF Super Hornets, which will reach their planned 9,000-hour flight life in time for the early 2030s. The F-A-XX fighter's primary mission range includes not only air combat, but also ground attack, surface warfare, and close air support. Requirements for the aircraft include first and foremost super cruise capability, advanced stealth capabilities against the most advanced enemy radars, and the best possible sensors and network adaptive radars. Among the additional wants of the command that were mentioned, in-flight refueling, reconnaissance, surveillance, and target acquisition RSTA, as well as electronic warfare equipment. While the Air Force and Navy are working on their next-generation fighters separately, both will feature super cruise flight and 35,000 to 40,000 pound-feet 156 to 178 kilonewtons thrust engines as a result of the next-generation adaptive propulsion program. The American military had a lot of trouble with this, by the way. The U.S. Air Force's Adaptive Versatile Engine Technology ADVENT program was initially responsible for developing adaptive cycle aircraft engines. These were intended for the Next Generation Bomber NGB, but uncertainty in the program led Rolls-Royce, one of the main developers of the project, to decide that these engines would be better suited for a potential upgrade of the F-35 Lightning II. Then, in 2012, ADVENT was replaced by the Adaptive Engine Technology Demonstrator, AETD, which was already the responsibility of other leading engine manufacturers, General Electric and Pratt & Whitney. GE even managed to set a new record for the highest demonstrated compressor and turbine temperatures during its work. By 2016, work on variable cycle engines continued under the auspices of a program called the Adaptive Engine Transition Program, AETP, 
It was only after AETP that the Next Generation Adapter Propulsion NGAP program was launched whose participants, General Electric and Pratt & Whitney, are still working on new propulsion systems for the future of American aviation, the XA-102 and XA-103. Speaking about its Next Generation Aerial Platform, representatives of the U.S. Navy have repeatedly emphasized the importance of introducing technologies such as maximum sensor connectivity and an electronically configurable smart shell into it. The first refers to highly advanced communications and sensor technologies, which include the ability to connect to satellites, other U.S. Navy and Air Force aircraft, and all allied devices that transmit information about what's happening on the battlefield in real time. A smart skin, in turn, involves having better sensors and electronics integrated into the fuselage of the aircraft itself to improve sensor performance while reducing drag and increasing the fighter's speed and maneuverability. And in order to increase the efficiency of avionics and ensure the introduction of the latest weapons, the military insists on creating a device with an open architecture and even cooler than the F-35. This will allow the fighter systems such as sensors, payloads, and weapons to be customized to suit the needs of a specific mission, or even rotate them, changing them before each flight if the command assigns several completely different tasks to the aircraft in a day. According to the Chief of Naval Operations, Jonathan Greenert, the FAXX will not rely primarily on its speed and stealth to the same extent as past generations of jet fighters like the F-22 Raptor or F-35 Lightning. Instead, in addition to defensive functions, it'll carry an even more diverse arsenal of advanced weapons to suppress or destroy enemy air defenses. Thanks to this approach, the new Navy aircraft will ensure survivability and superiority over even the most formidable opponents. Another option proposed by Greenard is to create the FAXX at the lowest possible price tag, but using the most expensive and high-performance weapons available to the U.S. fleet to defeat threats. This principle relies on the U.S. Navy's Naval Integrated Fire Control Counter Air NIFCCA, concept, which states that a single platform may not have a full sensor suite, relying on external information from other platforms to obtain target data and guidance. One way or another, in any of the concepts under consideration, the Navy's sixth-generation fighter will have a greater range and payload than its predecessors. The latter will include the latest missiles, including hypersonic ones, power supply and temperature systems for directed energy weapons like combat lasers, as well as sensors capable of hitting even targets with a small effective reflection area. It's not for nothing that the Global NGAD program places such emphasis on electronic warfare and devotes the lion's share of presentations to cyber warfare at a tactical level as part of a family of systems. The U.S. Navy is paying special attention in its new combat aircraft development programs to providing a significant increase in fuel range compared to the currently operational F-A-18E and F-35C operating at sea. China's anti-access zone, or the area of the Pacific Ocean that falls within the range of China's new hypersonic anti-ship missiles like the DFZF, now extends more than a thousand miles from China's shores, while these same Super Hornets and Lightning IIs have a combat radius of up to 650 miles. That is, American aircraft carriers cannot sail close enough to China to carry out combat sorties without putting the Nimitz and Ford-class ships at their disposal at risk. The FAXX, in turn, aims to address this capability gap with larger fuel reserves and powerful adaptive cycle engines, and this is not to mention the in-flight refueling capability of the Boeing MQ-29 Stingray carrier-based drones, which the Navy attributes to its future fighter. In general, despite the temporary pause in the NGAD program of the U.S. Air Force and the partial reboot of the view of it, work on collaborative combat aircraft, CCA drones, is still in full swing. These UAVs will have advanced artificial intelligence capable of interacting with the next generation of manned and unmanned combat aircraft, including not only fresh fighters, but also Northrop Grumman B-21 Raider bombers. At the same time, such an advantage will cost less than manned aircraft with similar capabilities. The Air Force has announced plans to spend more than $8.9 billion on CCA from fiscal years 2025 to 2029. Unfortunately, we're unlikely to see detailed characteristics of the FAXX fighters until 2028, since up until 2024, most of the funding for the Navy project was completely hidden within the framework of a special access program called Link Plumeria. 
one of the largest research programs of the Department of Defense. The latest news that emerged around the program also didn't arouse optimism among aircraft fans. First off, in early March of this year, there was the proposal from Lockheed, which submitted an application to participate in the FAXX program, but didn't meet the Navy's criteria, leaving Boeing and Northrop Grumman among the main contenders. Secondly, back in March of 2024, more and more information began to show up in the media stating that funding for the FAXX, previously projected at $1.5 billion for 2025, was cut off by the restrictions of the Fiscal Responsibility Act of 2023. American legislators set a limit on defense spending in 2025 to the amount of $895 billion, out of which the Navy and Marine Corps only got $257.6 billion. Instead of focusing efforts on the FAXX, the Navy has proposed focusing on short-term investments for the time being. Therefore, it has yet to be seen whether the service can convince the authorities to reconsider their decision, something which doesn't depend on the talent of Boeing or Northrop Grumman engineers. What do you think? Will the U.S. Navy be able to defend its right to actively develop a new carrier-based fighter, or will it face the same pause as the sixth-generation fighter of the U.S. Air Force? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.